Nerd morning everyone, my name is Jeremy and this is the DC Icon series and we're going to be talking about each of these books and I'm actually going to be ranking them as well. All of these series uh, books are incredible. I really, really love all of them. They've got characters like Wonder Woman and Batman and I find the way they told YA stories with honestly some pretty deep, heavy hitting issues talked about and discussed in these were really incredible and very impressive. And so I am really excited to go through these and to rank them. When I'm ranking them, the least favorite ones are still really incredible in my opinion, but we're gonna have to place them in an order. Um, so we're gonna quickly go through their print order um, and you don't have to read these in order of print they don't actually like string together to be able to make one single uh story but they're kind of in the same flavor or same vein and with that i think that you can pick and choose any of these that seem exciting to you you can go for and read in any order you want to read in them in so the first one that was in the print order was wonder woman Warbringer. This story, I think, was really fun. It kicked off this series, and I think it was going in a really, really good direction here. Um, so that one's really fun. All of these are them kind of as younger characters, and they don't even necessarily fit in the same universe necessarily, as certainly not necessarily doing the things that they were doing in the comics. So these are kind of standalone experiences. Um, the next one is Batman Nightwalker. Really cool. I really thought this one's fun. I'm a huge Batman fan, so this one was hitting um, a lot of the right type of bells for me. So that was the second one that was published. Uh, this one that came out third was Catwoman Soul Stealer. I think this um, one really showed me that they're trying to not necessarily do things that in the comic way because they were doing a few things that were recognizably different, um, but they were doing them very, very well. So that was great and interesting to see. Then we have Superman Dawn Breaker. This is actually a signed copy. So that was really fun to be able to have that added to my collection. Um, the next two, I think they start to shift their direction and their tone a little bit and they also changed their printing style um this next one is black canary breaking silence um this one was the most different than all of the other ones in comparison to the comic books and how that works and i'll talk about that in a second as well and then we have the latest one in the series harley quinn reckoning and this one honestly has come out not too long ago and I think was extremely powerful. So those were all six in the order that they were published. So what I'm going to do is go from six to one and I'm going to go through these in my ranking. Those, these are you know personal takes on these and they're all really, really good. Um, in sixth place, I'm going to be putting Harley Quinn Reckoning. Now, this was beautifully written. Very, very powerful. One of the things that I struggled with this personally was that I found it very triggering. Um, I have to put an asterisk, a caution warning on this because I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to books, uh, book readers who are going to be sensitive to some heavy, heavy topics because this book, I think, could be triggering, um, particularly as it talks about all forms of abuse. Um, and it goes into some moments here that I think are extremely dark. And one of the powerful things that this book does, though, is that it doesn't hold back. It hits those uh, moments. It hits those topics very, very well. And it is... A very good in the way that it does those things. For me, I had to take breaks because I felt like it was uh, very raw and I struggled a little bit going through that that way. It also talks about women's rights and also women in education, um, in STEM careers, in the sciences, things like that, which I found to be 
really, really cool. And this book uh, has that kind of girl power vibe, and I absolutely loved all of those things about it. Um, Harley Quinn is entering into the college sphere, graduating high school, entering into college, and seeing a young Harley Quinn being brilliant, being uh, a little crazy, and figuring out adulthood and entering into that world were really, really fun things about this. Harley Quinn is one of my favorite characters, and seeing this character grow into being from Harley Quinzel to Harley Quinn was really cool, and you get some of that inside of this book. I believe there is going to be a sequel to this one, and I'm really looking forward to it. I feel so sad about putting that one there because it's just such a good book, but they ultimately have to go into a ranking spot. By That's the point of the whole video, right? My next one that I'm going to be putting, this one is at fifth place, is the Superman novel Dawn Breaker. I feel like this was a really good book, but I don't necessarily feel like it was doing a lot of work with the character of Superman that I hadn't seen before. With things like Smallville and other types of stuff, I've seen a younger Superman, and I've seen him trying to be able to understand his powers, understand his place in the world, and those type of elements. And those type of things are explored in this story. They're done really, really well, but they're just nothing here that I didn't already know or didn't already feel like I have experienced. And so if you're looking for a story that's very true to Superman, this is a major win. Um, I really love the things that we get with Lex Luthor and uh, the other people in his high school and uh, we got Lana Ling and other types of things going on in here that are really, really fun. Uh, I feel like the big like social issues that they're exploring here um, is that, kind of that corporate monopolism. Uh, we have giant corporations in here that are really shaking up the town and the ideas behind that I think were really, really valuable and interesting. Um, also, there's good conversations about immigration and about racism and issues like that that I think are discussed in this movie or discussed in this book really, really well. And I I think it's a great book and it's one I definitely recommend. Um, uh, for my rank of number four, we're putting in Catwoman. This book was so cool to get a deep look in Catwoman. Also in this one, we have um, a, a second character that's just as important, and that was Batwing with, with uh, Luke Fox. And this is really cool to see um, Batwing and Catwoman, and we also get characters like Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, the Joker and more like it's very rich I think in the cast and if you like a lot of the different DC characters particularly those that revolve around Gotham this book does some incredible things. Um, I feel like it also has some really interesting conversations about education, um, about disabilities, uh, about uh, the medical system, um, they have really interesting conversations about poverty and the poverty disparity between the wealthy class and the middle class and poorer class groups. And all of those things, I think, were talked about very, very well. Um, Catwoman herself is on this mission, and uh, we get a different take of Catwoman than we do in the comics because she has a different origin of how she comes about um, to become Catwoman. Um, and I'm not going to spoil all of that. Um, and then uh, Luke Fox um, has an interesting uh, give and take relationship with Catwoman in this one that is, I think, unique here from anywhere else that I've seen, um, which uh, strays a little bit from the comics. Um, but overall, I think that this book was really, really fun, and I definitely recommend this one as well. I mean, I recommend them all because they're all really great books, and that's one of the things that's great about this is they're all winners. They're all really incredible. Um, 
In my third place, I'm going to be putting the Black Canary books, Breaking Silence. This one is the most uh, going a different path from the comics than any of the other ones in this series. This one goes into a more of like a sci-fi type of direction. We have a futuristic dystopian society inside of Gotham, but it's essentially like bleeding into the rest of the world, apparently. And in this one, um, women are no longer able to sing. They're being assigned jobs. Um, they're essentially being pulled back down to a second-class citizen. And in that, you get a really darker tone. Um, and you have the Court of Owls, which is really cool, and seeing how those are explored. And we're seeing a kind of a futuristic story. So most of the characters that would be in the classic Gotham world are either really old or dead. And that was really different and interesting. I think this book is exploring some really interesting ideas. Um, it obviously is dealing with concepts of feminism and of... Uh, sexism and the ideas of classes in society and uh, women's rights, all of those type of things are really interestingly explored. And I feel like this one has a lot to share and a lot to say, and it does it. Uh, I really, really think that's cool. Black Canary herself in this one, I think is really fun. We get a version of Green Arrow as well, and that's really cool. And I feel like this one really sits well in the YA genre. And it's a great, great book. And it left me thinking, which I think a book doing that is always really amazing. The second one that I am placing on my list in second place is going to this Wonder Woman book, uh, Warbringer. This one I think was really powerful. Started off this series, we get a young Diana who essentially has a similar origin to her older self, where we have a person who washes up on shore, and then that takes Wonder Woman off from the island on an adventure. But this is like a secret adventure that um, is essentially going to be forgotten in time because she's going to have her regular origins and all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of like, wait a second, how is this all going to really fit? But they do a really good job of weaving all that together um, and getting this to be a powerful standalone story. Um, the girl that she rescues is a really fun character and we get a group of young adults um, together which makes this a really fun story in the YA genre. Um, in this one we have that fate versus choice conversation. Do we get to choose our future? Is our future written out for us? Um, there's conversations about like self-worth and worthiness and things like that that I think are really good and grounded and, and relevant to a lot of people. Um, we also, with this, we have some uh, aspects about family expectation and all of those type of things are really interesting in how they're woven together into this story. Um, I feel like this is one of the most powerful, most effective and most uh, easily re-readable ones out of this series. And that's one of the reasons why I put it so high on the list, because it's one I've read multiple times, and I've actually read most all of these multiple times. Um, but this one, I'm I, just very easy for me to go back to, and it makes a really great book in, in, in this series. Um, I am a sucker for Batman. Batman uh, Nightwalker takes my first place in this because this book... Well, partly because it's about Batman, but I really, really love the uh, conversations, the internal monologues, the exploration that we get here. Um, it's really cool to see a young Bruce Wayne who essentially just barely is inheriting and accessing his wealth. We get to see him play with um, kind of a supercar that is going to be a predecessor, I think, to the Batmobile. And we get to see him trying to understand crime and criminology and some of those type of dynamics, which are ultimately going to lead him towards that Batman journey. And uh, we get these uh, criminals 
um, that we get to uh, try to understand and interact with. And we get to see him essentially uh, step up to heroing, even though he's not necessarily Batman at this moment. Um, and that's fun to see him kind of growing and leading towards him being Batman. Um, in this one, we get some of the ideas of uh, the some of the unfairness inside of medical practice, which I thought was really interesting. Um, we get to see how uh, criminal justice is sometimes flawed, and uh, we get to see some other type of issues going along and related to that. Also, the kind of the one percent, the ultra wealthy, and some criticisms about that dynamic in society. I think they had some interesting com conversations about that in here too. Um, the relationships that Bruce has with different people in this, I think, is really interesting. Um, we get to see um, a Two-Face before he's Two-Face, and then you know, having a friendship and a dynamic there, which is one of the things that I really love in the comics, and that they explored a little bit of that here, too, um, with Harvey Dent, I thought was really, really fun. Um, I really think this book was one that just kept me going throughout the story, um, really held my attention, and it takes that number one spot. So hopefully that list helps you have an idea about which ones sound interesting or intriguing to you. I absolutely love all of these books. I've read them and will probably reread all of them again. Um, and they're really, really fun. I think it's an interesting idea to have these characters, which are so, like, synonymous to the comic book medium, being told outside of that medium. And from books to comic books, um, we have some different aspects that go into play about how we tell the story. And even though they're it's still in a book format where you're turning a page, um, the visual storytelling medium that's so strong inside of a comic book, you don't get inside of a book. And some of the descriptions and imagination elements that you get while reading a book, you just don't necessarily get the same way when you read a comic. And so getting these characters in different mediums, for me, I thought was really interesting to see how those differences were playing out in those different mediums. Um, I think these are great. I'm excited uh, for this series, and I'm hoping that you guys are excited about this series and maybe intrigued about it. Um, if you've read any of these, which ones were your favorite? If you hadn't read any of these, which one is one that you are intrigued about or most interested in reading yourself? Let me know. Put those in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I also have a gaming channel here where I do game streams and things like that on YouTube, and that's called Nerd Morning Gaming. So I invite you to check that out as well. Um, also, you can find me on Instagram, on TikTok, and other type of places like that um, at Nerd Morning. So follow along in all those places for more fun content. Thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you guys all next time on another video.